Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Thank you for joining me today. Before we get started, I want to ask you to please make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and also to check out my website that's now up and running, www.integralclinicsolutions.com. There you can find some resources as well as blogs. My videos are turned into blogs for your resource for your access and for you to go back and kind of see things in case you weren't sure what it means what I'm talking about or if you're just one of those learners that needs to read something this is where you're going to find it so please check out my website today we're going to talk about IPAs or independent physician associations and I know I've done a video in the past on IPAs but I got a lot of questions about them and I'm going to try to provide a little bit more information for you but I'm also going to put some links in the description of the video for your reference as well so you can start doing your own diligence. I want to start off like I did in my other video that I am not super well versed on IPAs. They are very different depending on where you're located. I know California has a ton of IPAs and basically if you are an independent doctor, you want to make sure that you're trying to get part of at least a bulk of those IPAs memberships because that is really how you're going to get your patients and you're going to get better reimbursement. But an independent physician association is exactly what it sounds like. It is a bunch of independent practicing providers that come together and they form this group and they use it as leverage when it comes to negotiating reimbursement contracts with insurance companies. They can use it for ordering of supplies, medication Locations, depending on how your IPAs are set up. There's so many different variances. Some are really large and they're very organized. Some are a little bit smaller. They're more local or regional to maybe your little area, county or city. And it just depends on the different services they offer. But basically it's a group of physicians that can come together and help one another in whatever way it may be. Some IPAs will help you with credentialing, which is wonderful, right? Some will help you get ideas or different resources to help you accommodate the administrative burden that comes with owning your own practice. They are resources that you can ask if they're experiencing the same thing that you are. But as a provider, if you do join an IPA, the beauty of it is you still have your own policies and procedures on how you're going to treat your patients. They don't have oversay or discussion or any kind of influence on how you practice your medicine and how you run your practice. That's the beauty of it. And that's why a lot of people like IPAs because they get the benefit of maybe getting some discounts on supplies and medications. They get better reimbursement by being a big group from the insurance companies looking at it that way instead of a small practice. But then you also have your autonomy when it comes to your actual business. Joining an IPA might not be for everybody and there are definitely things you want to consider. It could be what if something went wrong with the IPA or the relationship between the IPA and the insurance companies and reimbursement starts going down. Or if you are trying to get contracts with capitation plans and maybe it's backwards for the IPAs and they actually reimburse less for IPAs than they would if you were out on your own. There are some things you need to think about as far as making sure there's no conflict of interest when it comes to reimbursements and participation in certain things. And these are all things that are actually uh, issues, topics, discussions that are brought up on the Family Practice Association Network page about IPAs. They do a really nice job of explaining how they can be beneficial, some drawbacks that could be there. So I'm gonna put that link for sure in my video description. So make sure you check out that link and while you're there, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. 
But in all seriousness, I, I do want to put the link because I think it's going to be more beneficial for you to be able to go there and look at it, even if you're not family medicine, even if you're not general practice, maybe you're a specialty, which IPAs do contract with specialists as well. And these are all points that can be taken from for all specialties, not just family medicine. I just happened to find the information on that academy's website. So make sure you check that out if you're considering joining an IPA in your area, just to make sure that you're doing your due diligence. IPAs really started to grow when the Affordable Health Care Act came out because of the administrative burden and the requirements for tracking of patient care and value-based care starting to kind of get its uh, tread under it and the macro MIPS situation. It was just one of those things that something had to happen because so many people want to still practice independently, but just because of all of the now requirements of an independent small practice it's the same as a big large entity it's just some things make it very challenging or maybe not feasible and this is kind of bringing all of you independent providers together to try to help one another depending on the market you might have a lot of ipas again you might not have very many at all and so it's just hard for me to be able to speak to this in general because like i said california has a ton oregon has a few they're starting to get more and then there might be some parts of the country that really don't have any and so it's one of those things that you just need to be aware of if you have a lot of hmos in the area or like medical home type um, medical insurances that patients sign up for, then there's a very high likelihood you're going to have more IPAs than places that don't have a lot of HMOs or medical family, medical home plans. And that's just kind of the way that things have evolved. Google can be your best friend in this situation. You can look up IPAs in your area. You can speak to other doctors you know that practice in the area or their doctor's uh, managers to because they'll probably be the ones that actually know about the IPAs more than the doctors or credentialing specialists in your area. They should be able to help you kind of identify the IPAs because I honestly, there's so many different ways to look at it and there's so many different states and localities and stuff there's no way that i would be able to answer all of your questions depending on your unique situation but google is your best friend think outside the box for the resources other people you know that run practices talk to their managers credentialing specialists that are familiar with the payers in your area um, you know, think about that and how you can network and resource to find out more information. That's what I would encourage you to do if you're seriously considering IPAs or wanting to know what IPAs are in your area. The nice thing about IPAs as well, and again, all of them are different, but I do know some will send out like incentive payments to their participating providers or groups a certain time of the year. So if they've done really well by hitting incentives, like that money gets pooled together and then it gets sent out to everybody. So it's a little bit maybe extra financial incentive for you, but again, it might require you to put in a little bit more. And that's just the things that you need to talk about with the people who run the IP what their expectations are of you as a group or provider in the IPA, what you get for being in the IPA. Do you have to pay anything? Is it sweat equity? You know, I mean, those are things that you would just need to ask. Uh, but it's definitely worth exploring. I, again, I'm going to put that link from the Family Medicine Academy in the description of the video so that you can check it out and kind of put your questions together for that situation based off that article. If you have any questions or comments that I hope I can help with, please leave that in the comments below. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and please share this video with anybody whom you feel would benefit. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.